thank you professor bandari and vatigoti foundation for uh, having me this so uh, i'm going to discuss upon what is the evidence of partial nephrectomy then how robotic surgery has changed the paradigm evidence of complex tumors and limitation in the literature so uh, so there is only one level one evidence which is a phase 3 trial urtc 30904 which has actually uh, probably not discussed much the only trial though but which uh, which included all patients of uh, for partial nephrectomy uh, all patients uh, all patients with renal tumors less than 5 cm and then they found that uh, radical nephrectomy or partial nephrectomy had a equivalent overall survival NSS was also associated with uh, equivalent uh, oncology. There was no cancer specific survival. Was also not significant. And renal function, which actually we thought should decline, and that is why we do partial, did not also show much change. So, but there were some criticism with the URCTC that uh, it actually intended to involve 1,300 patients, and it would only involve 500 patients. So that was one of the biggest uh, thing. And then uh, in those 250 odd patients on each arm all of them were done open surgery so that was another thing but then uh, dr mani menon group uh, with uh, craig rogers they, per they did an external validation of this urtc this was published in 2018 bjui there they did this with an aim to ascertain if the trial patients were representative of contemporary patients with renal cell carcinoma in usa using the ncd ncdb database which captures about 70 percent of of northern usa and this is what they found. They found that there were subtle differences in the characteristics. So obviously they did not look into what is the survival outcomes of this. They just tried to see if we apply the same criteria and look into our data, is it representative? And they found that there were very subtle differences, but those differences could not have accounted for uh, any change. So that's why they concluded that although EORTC 30904 cohort had somewhat different baseline characteristics than real world, in the real world there were patients with more uh, comorbid uh, conditions. In patients with small real masses, none of these differences seem to have the potential to significantly alter the outcomes of the trial. And the later, that is EORTC, should therefore be considered generalizable to contemporary North American patients. So that's an eye opener, uh, which is a recent publication. So it does tell us that not that uh, uh, partial nephrectomy. At the end of the day, the the, uh, the idea of doing partial is to have a uh, equivalent or a better oncological outcome and preservation of better renal function. But then this evidence is not uh, very strongly showing us that. So then there was a uh, there was a meta-analysis of all the trials. This was again published recently by Libovich Group. They looked into all the trials published so far, including the URTC, and uh, they tried to see does partial nephrectomy make any difference. Here there's some good news for us that they found that all cancer mortality, the hazard ratio was 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.81, which means that there was 19% risk reduction of all-cause mortality in patients who underwent partial nephrectomy. There was about 29% risk reduction in cancer-specific mortality in patients who underwent partial nephrectomy. And the risk of CKD, there was about 61% risk reduction in CKD incidence in patients who underwent partial nephrectomy. And this was the only factor which was highly significant. And so the, they concluded that with available, but the evidence quality was low because it was not an RCT. All of them were series except for one RCT which we had. So although the evidence is low quality, but partial nephrectomy was shown to be associated with lower risk of all-cause mortality, cancer-specific mortality, and severe CKD. But what they say is that the patient should definitely be told about uh, pros and cons, but they should be made aware about the uncertainty of the evidence. But then robotic surgery has definitely changed, that the enthusiasm of doing robotic surgery and the way we are able to manage difficult situations, the thrill which the surgeons get, so it has changed the paradigm that that we have been using doing partial nephrectomy more and more. And then we had a lot of renal nephrometry scores, Padua scores, C index, so many scoring systems which actually uh, guided us whether we can do partial or open, which one should be done. So we also looked into our uh, own uh, patient database and tried to compare all the three indices just to have an idea of which one uh, fares better. And we concluded that there was a good correlation in all the three indices, so it, all of them work. Any of one of one which you, you which you think is easy can be used. However, C index had the lowest reproducibility because it had some mathematical calculation about the index, but it correlated best with the trifecta outcome. So I leave it here rather than saying which one is better. We most commonly use renal nephrometry score. 
Then let us look into uh, with robotic surgery. We started doing more complex cases. So Dr. Anand presented his series about uh, complex cases. So in the literature also, this is the Taiwan group where they looked into their outcomes of robotic partial nephrectomy in hyalur versus non-hyalur tumors. That essentially, probably almost all the case series would have the same kind of conclusion that for renal hyalur tumors, robotic assisted partial provided better acceptable results, both perioperatively, pathologically, and with respect to renal function over a short term period. They, but they did found that their blood loss was more, their warm ischemia time was more. Then there's another uh, um, uh, group which looked into their case series of 500 patients or a multicenter uh, analysis. They, what they found, again, with respect to tumor complexity, they found that complication rates, histopathology results, as well as quality criteria as indicated by MIC. MIC is the margin, ischemia, and the complication. And trifecta were similar for both high and low complexity groups. So once the renal inflammatory scores were there, we were able to divide them into... Uh, into good risk and uh, bad risk tumors, and they found that with robotic assistance, probably the outcomes are comparable. We also shared our, uh, published our initial experience in Indian Journal of Urology. But this, this was only about 18 cases where we, uh, these were the type of complex cases where we did uh, robotic partial. And uh, only thing which found, we found that estimated blood loss and pellucalicial entry was significantly more in patients with high renal inflammatory score. However, there was no in the, the trifecta outcomes were and uh, were comparable in both low and uh, high renal inflammatory score. We also compared it with the existing literature, and our results were actually in, in tune with the other series. Although we had one recurrence, so we are actually looking into our long-term data. So far, now we have done about 220 such cases, uh, of which maybe around 40 would be par uh, would be high renal inflammatory, and we're looking into the long-term data to see are we doing anything good by by doing partial. One more Indian study by Dr. Kekre et al. from CMC Vellore. They analyzed their, uh, their perioperative complications and postoperative outcomes after partial nephrectomy. And what they found, out, found was for complex renal masses, it, uh, it remained the only significant predictor of complications. Although the complications are minor, but complications were uh, the only significant factor which they found was presence of a complex renal mass. So just keep that in mind. Then uh, Professor Bhandari's initiative, uh, VCQI database. This was about uh, from 15, 23 different countries uh, with various surgeons involved. They lived in, looked into their uh, trifecta, the trifecta outcomes of this database in solitary functioning kidneys. And they found that uh, robotic assisted partial was safe and effective treatment option for select tumors in solitary kidneys in terms of trifecta outcomes. Uh, so one of the advantages of this database, as Sir also mentioned, is that uh, if that's a good platform for us to collaborate the data and we can, um, uh, we would be able to discuss more such uh, papers out of it. We could not be part of it because of some uh, institutional uh, regulations. Then highly complex tumors was looked by this Pennsylvania group. They, they uh, in their institution, again, it's a case series, so they found that Patients with moderate and highly complex solid renal tumors classified by nephrometry score, robotic partial offered a comparable, comparable perioperative and functional outcomes with added benefit of decreased hospital stay. So robotic assistance probably has uh, infused a lot of enthusiasm about uh, feasibility of partial. There's another uh, group where they looked into robotic assisted laparoscopic partial for tumors greater than four centimeters. Again, they found that the outcomes uh, were comparable to patients uh, on a long-term basis at a median follow of 22 months. The robotic partial nephrectomy did maintain the oncological and functional outcomes. So I would recommend all the audience who are here to actually read through this paper. This is one very interesting uh, paper by Kutikeo Group, the one who actually gave the renal inflammatory scoring system. In, they actually uh, did a collaborative review of all of risk benefit, benefit trade-offs between partial and radical nephrectomy in management of complex renal tumors. We all know with the literature that probably simple tumors, there's no much argument that we can still do, uh, uh, still do a uh, partial nephrectomy. But in a complex tumor, we are actually adding that risk of extra complication, which robot with radical nephrectomy doesn't have. That you add extra risk of bleeding, extra, extra risk of oncological uh, problems. So they actually looked into all these factors. And in their analysis, what they found that patient, when the younger patients probably are more likely to be benefited from nephron preservation. So if you're an older patient, 
either or and, and real functions are normal, let's uh, you may do with radical nephrectomy, you're not doing anything wrong. But in a younger patient, probably by doing a partial, you're actually benefiting him in terms of his nephron preservation. Also, uh, in patients whose uh, uh, CKD, preoperative CKD actually determined the outcome. So patients who had a uh, CKD uh, medical or surgical preoperatively, uh, they had a poorer outcome. So in those situations, whether you do radical or partial may not make a difference. And also when you're doing a partial and, you're and the amount of the GFR, uh, if it is less than 45 ml, that is a situation where probably uh, even if you do partially, you're not going to change the outcome. So that is their conclusion. I think as you go into the literature, it is more confusing rather than uh, clearing that whether you should do it or not. But the, these are some of the uh, some of the issues which they raise, and probably the only way to answer it is that to have a an RCT of a patient between four to ten centimeters tumor where you offer radical versus partial and see their five five year and ten year outcome. So uh, this series, they concluded that for anatomically complex tumors, partial nephrectomy preserves renal parenchyma, but may expose the patient to higher perioperative risk than radical nephrectomy. The risk and the benefits of each surgical approach must be better objectified for identification of patients. So we are still not very sure in a complex partial, in a complex tumor, that whether we should offer partial or a radical because we don't have clear-cut answers and obviously all the series they are biased. When I do a, a select a patient, it is biased based on my ability to do it and not, not by anything else. So is there evidence? Probably the answer is yes, some evidence. But what is the level of evidence? It is very low as of today. And we, have, uh, we don't have an RCT, we don't have long-term long oncological outcomes and there are a lot of long-term uh, relevant uh, questions which need to be answered. Thank you.